If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where Harlem sits? Pouring on the ribs, spangled gowns upon a bed, the of high browns from down the levee, all misfits. Pouring on the ribs. Welcome back to Rod's Radios. This is part three of the Bush BS35. Uh, valve radio that I started to do uh, a little over three months ago and I'm afraid a few things took place in the meantime that meant that nothing's happened since uh, episode two. Now at the end of episode two I'd finished putting the logo on the cabinet because again I had diverted from the main problem on the radio which was that there was no AM reception. There was no long wave, no medium wave. I could get short wave one, two and three but I was just about to give up on this problem because the coils in the RF se section were buried in the depths of the receiver. I couldn't get at them for a start. Also, I didn't have a service manual for this radio, which caused more difficulties as to what was wrong. So let's see what happened anyway in the meantime. I have started to look at it again and made a little bit of progress, but I'll show you now what happened. This is a service sheet I obtained in the meantime. It's for a Bush model AC34, which is kind of similar to the radio I have, except that it has fewer wave bands. It just has one long, one medium, one short wave band, whereas mine has, I think, three short wave bands. But other than that, it looks kind of the same. Let's focus in on the part that was giving a problem. Now this is the mixer oscillator stage. Uh, this is the ECH81 mixer oscillator. And these are the tank circuits for each of the wave bands. The one on top is a short wave because there's only one short wave band on this, on this circuit diagram. And then we have the medium and long wave. So what I did was I got a scope, uh, an oscilloscope and scoped on at this point here, which is the um, tuning condenser for the oscillator stage. And while I had short wave one, two, and three selected, there was a fine waveform, a proper waveform showing the different frequencies of the oscillator working. However, when I selected medium and long wave, it just went dead, nothing at all. So I tried to focus around here. And as I said, it was kind of difficult to get at this because it is buried. This radio was manufactured in layers and I don't think they were ever meant to be repaired at this stage. However, I messed around with it for a long time. I checked the capacitors the, that were uh, across the coils here. They seem to be okay. The coils themselves seem to have continuity. And I was just about to give up when I started messing about with the trimmers. And there are quite a lot of trimmers on this radio for the shortwave bands. And it was hard to work out which was which, but I finally located two on the left-hand side looking in at the side of the chassis and started twiddling them. And lo and behold, when I selected long wave and tweaked this trimmer here, it started to oscillate. Now this was um, obtained by unscrewing the trimmer capacitor when it sprang into life. And when I tightened it again, it was still working. I loosened it, I tightened it, I loosened it, it tightened. Nothing wrong. Hey, good news. So why didn't I try the other one, which I did, the medium wave one, and lo and behold, when I loosened it, the medium wave sprang into life. Loosened it, tightened it, loosened it, tightened it, still working. So the only thing I can reckon is that there was some sort of leakage in the patter capacitors across each of the coils, the long wave coil and the medium wave coil, that was causing the oscillator to shut down and on releasing the screw, it seemed to release the leak. Sounds a bit odd, but hey ho, it's working now. So we now have a working radio on long wave, medium wave, and short wave. Happy days. Back in the workshop again, with the radio now working on long wave, medium wave, and short wave as before, I did notice that the sound was actually quite distorted. Now this wasn't apparent when the radio was working on shortwave because the reception is so crackly and weak, you wouldn't notice uh, if the sound had low, medium or high fidelity. 
But with the long wave station working on our local channel here, it was quite apparent that the sound was bad. It was slightly weak and also distorted. So of course the first thing was to check around the output stage of the audio amplifier and in this radio it's handled by an EL41 output valve. And now the first thing to check of course would have been the isolating capacitor from the previous stage. But of course I'd replaced that already as part of the recapping so it turned out it wasn't that. So the next thing was to actually check the valve itself. Now I don't have these valves as spare parts and for an, a EL, sorry it's a UL81 actually because of course this is a series chain heater uh, radio and I was never going to get a replacement valve to check if it was uh, responsible. So the next thing was to check if there was any leakage in it. So I switched on the radio and let it heat up and then took the UL41 valve out and started checking just with a meter the cathode grid heater chain to see if there was any leakage between any of those elements. So just before I removed the valve I took some measurements on the cathode and grid and sure enough they were way out. The cathode was measuring about 16 volts normally it should be around the 6 or 7 mark and the grid was also measuring 16 volts so I don't know how this valve ever conducted at all but, but it was. So there's definitely something wrong here and the isolating capacitor here was the one I checked and had replaced so that was okay. So it now points to the valve itself being leaky. So I'm just going to take it out while it's hot and see if I can measure the ohms between the cathode and the grid to confirm that it is in fact leaky. And indeed when the valve was hot and measured across the ohm meter, I was getting a resistance of about 160k which as the valve cooled down the resistance went higher and higher and higher thus confirming the fact that this valve is dead. It's dead. So what to do? With the output valve faulty there's no way I can get a replacement for this. I've checked on eBay and various other sites and to get one it might be new old stock. Uh, it's in the region of about 40 euros at the moment and that combined with postage means that this is not a viable repair by just replacing the valve so I've got to think of something else. Well what I've come up with is this. This is a little audio output module that I'm going to replace. In other words put in circuit where the UL41 valve was. Now I have to leave the UL41 in place for this because it's part of the heater chain to maintain the current going through the other valves correctly. So what I'm going to do is, and you see I've done a little bit of preparation work here, I'm going to place this little module uh, at this point here. I put a standoff to mount it and I've made a connection into the previous stage of the valve that used to feed the UL41 and I'm going to make this feed the module and from the module there's a, an audio output that will go to the loudspeaker. Now I need to power this so I've also put a little circuit board on the side of the chassis here and this takes AC from the mains transformer at a low voltage and with a bridge rectifier converts it into DC and it's smoothed by a little capacitor here. So this is going to give me uh, approximately a 9 volt supply which is what this little module replies on to run. So let's see how this one's going to work out. And here's the result. Here's the little amplifier module that now replaces what this UL41 output valve was doing. And uh, around the side as I showed you before is the little power supply that is fed off the um, transformer. And I've taken a tap off that by a little connecting block which brings leads around the back here. And this is going to feed the Bluetooth module. So with the Bluetooth module this is going to make this radio far more useful than it was before. Because with medium and long wave and short wave and the fewer and fewer stations appearing on these wave bands. I think uh, the person who owns this will be happy to use it more with the Bluetooth feature. 
So let's hear what it sounds like. So starting with shortwave one, we've got it on one at the moment. Shortwave two. Shortwave three. Not much on that. Medium wave. Long wave. Really, really poor from, from Donny, Donny Gall. Well, I'm hearing that uh, that Irish try the under 20 try scored by Hugh Galpin. So uh, Ireland off to a flyer. In... And then finally, Bluetooth, which is selected by the gram setting. And for the Bluetooth, I'll play some music from the iPad that I have here. So this radio is working pretty well now. I think it's time to pop it back into the cabinet. And here we are, the finished article. It's back in its cabinet and looking pretty good, I think. Let's have a quick listen to it. That's the one and only station we have here in Ireland uh, on Longwave, it's the national channel. And it's very hard to pick up anything else uh, apart from long distance stations from the UK which are noisy and not so good. So let's try it on the gram section which of course is now the Bluetooth. And for this purpose I have the iPad set up and paired with the Bluetooth module in it. So let's see how this one sounds. Pretty good. Now some purists would say that what I've done with this radio is a bit of an abomination, but I really had no choice. Uh, I was never going to get a valve to sort out the audio output problem on this. If I had got one, there was no guarantee it was going to even work or would last very long because of the age of this uh, type of component. However, it is working, albeit through a transistorized output stage. And I think the use of the Bluetooth module in it will make it even more useful for the owner, who I hope will be happy with the result. So, if you have been, thanks for watching. <laughs>